You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. College football playoff odds for next season are out. And uh, Georgia, the defending national champion, not the um, odds on favor to win it next year. It's actually Alabama, 5-2. to two. Georgia, 9-2. to two. Ohio State, 7-1. to one. What's really interesting is that um, not only in those are odds are via uh, Caesars, there's some other things that I want to delve into there, but um, ESPN put out their way too early top 25, and there's a pretty significant disparity here that I'll, I want to touch on. In their way too early top 25 for next year, um, Bama, they have as number one, which is no surprise, right? Bryce Young is going to be back. They're expecting six starters on offense, seven on defense. Uh, two specialists as well. So Bama, ESPN projects, is the preseason number one team. Ohio State, number two. Uh, they're going to lose the, the wide receivers, but obviously they had some wide receivers emerge. C.J. Stroud will be back at quarterback. And then at three is where you find the defending national champ, Georgia Bulldogs, uh, for uh, for 2022, and then the one that's going to anger a lot of you is uh, they got Texas A and M preseason number four. So believers in Jimbo right there. Uh, uh, Ten starters returning, five offense, five defense, and then uh, fifth they've got the um, the Michigan Wolverines who made it into the college football playoff this year, but uh, got pounded in the semifinal Orange Bowl against um, against those Georgia Bulldogs that went on to win the national championship. Brian Kelly's former team, uh, Notre Dame, they have it six. Uh, Utah, NC State, Oklahoma State, and Michigan State rounding out the top 10. What's interesting is that there were two very notable omissions, two programs that have been at the top and front of these conversations for the last decade. Clemson, Oklahoma, not in the preseason top 10. Uh, they've got Clemson just on the outside looking at it at 11, and Oklahoma minus Lincoln Riley, and now obviously minus both Spencer Rattler and Caleb Williams, at 17. 17. The reason I pointed out that it was interesting is, in the disparity, is while ESPN's way too early top 25 has Clemson at 11, Oklahoma at 17, Las Vegas still sees value in Clemson and Oklahoma. After Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, the next two best odds to win the national championship next year Clemson at 12 to 1, Oklahoma at 15 to 1. So they're not buying the fact that Clemson and OU are on their way out. They still play in weak conferences where if you win a Power Five league, you're going to have a great chance to get in. And if you're, you can't win it if you're not in. And so they're basically looking at Clemson and Oklahoma saying, all right, you two are the teams that have the best shot in your conference to win your league to get into the playoffs. So that's why most likely you see Clemson and Oklahoma there. Vegas has Michigan, Southern Cal. Big play on Lincoln Riley there. On the upside at twenty to one, Notre Dame at twenty five to one, and then Texas A and M at twenty five to one. So that's the other big disparity. ESPN has A and M fourth. Vegas has A and M with the ninth best odds at twenty five to one, right there neck and neck with Notre Dame. But it makes a lot of sense, right? In order to win the national championship, you got to go through the SEC West. So if you're A and M, you got to go through Bama, and then through an SEC championship game, likely against Georgia. So it's understandable why it's going to be more difficult for one of those teams to have better championship odds when that's the path that you have to follow to get through the um, the SEC into the national championship. Of note here with respect to this conversation is that when you run through the rest of the top 25, there are seven SEC teams ranked. None of them are the LSU Tigers. Bama 1, Georgia 3, A&M 4. Big gap, none after 4 until you find Arkansas at 20. Kentucky at 21. Ole Miss at 23. South Carolina rounding out the top 25. So, there's a couple of ways to look at this. Number 1, half of the SEC they have ranked. 7 of the 14 teams they have ranked. And Florida, LSU, and Auburn are not among them. That certainly speaks to the strength of the league. 
to the guy again who's out there saying that the SEC is only Alabama or it's top heavy, Alabama, Georgia. No, it ain't, brother. You got half the league ranked and Auburn, Florida, LSU are not among those half ranked. Now, State, Missouri, Tennessee, and Vandy are the other four. Um, I also am very, I'm going to be very interested, like we mentioned, what happens with Clemson. I believe this is the test for Dabo and the and the sustainability. He loses both of his coordinators. We've gone over these numbers before when Brent Venables got the Oklahoma job. When you look at Dabo, his first few years there at Clemson were not great. Only when Brent Venables showed up did they start winning double-digit games every year and making the playoff. Brent Venables is gone now, and you're replacing your OC. Can Dabo, he promoted from within, how does that go? Is it seamless? If it is, Clemson's got, got Jimmys and Joes. They could certainly be right back in it. But we saw firsthand here at LSU what making the wrong hires at key staff spots does to a program like that. That's relying on your coordinators to be experts. So Clemson's going to be a fascinating test case this year. So too will Oklahoma. The aforementioned Brent Venables has left Clemson. He's back at Oklahoma where he was the DC. Now he's the head coach. You know, a guy who's almost 50 years old, who's a first-time head coach. How does this go? I don't know. I mean, maybe it's the the Mel Tucker um, uh, example of, at Michigan State. Maybe it's a guy who just was waiting his turn, finally got it, and he's going to do exceptionally well. He's got to replace quarterback, going to replace a lot of players on that side of the ball. That's why Oklahoma's down at 17 in, in these rankings. But those two are going to be fascinating to watch. But it could very well open the door for other teams to make their emergence. Um, if you ask me, do I think LSU, by the way, as far as the Vegas odds, Vegas did, does not give LSU championship odds among those ranked. I think there's 15 or so uh, schools they list that have championship odds. And down at the bottom is Baylor at 50 to 1. Even Florida has 40 to 1 odds, uh, tied with um, same as Utah, Wisconsin, Oklahoma State, Texas, Oregon, Cincinnati, all at 40 to 1. LSU not listed here. Um, and a big part of that, very likely, is. We have coaching staff turnover. We look at the roster turnover as well, coming off a six and seven season. But LSU is not ranked here in the preseason top twenty-five, and I don't suspect that when we get closer to the season and the actual preseason top twenty-five polls are out, I don't suspect LSU will be ranked. They shouldn't be. You're coming off a six and seven season, and you're you you, you played with thirty-eight scholarship players in your bowl game, and you're you're turning over roughly half of your roster. You shouldn't be ranked. But LSU should by the end of next season be in this ranking. I don't know where they'll be, what their final record will be, but they should be among the top 25 teams. I don't care what the roster issues are. The reason you're paying Brian Kelly is you have those expectations. I'm not saying the expectation needs to be to win a national championship for year one, but you should finish with a winning record, a bowl team that is, has a winning record and is in the top 25 from the end of the 2022 season. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.